Hi Namit. Hi. How are you? And Merry Christmas to you. You are in Merry Christmas, Christmas. color. Very festive. <laughs> All right. Merry Christmas to everyone. How's, how's everybody doing? Welcome to the week. The last week of the okay. year. Yes, the last week of the year. Um so the last IGTV live series also for that matter. Uh so thank you for spending time with us on a Christmas day. I know you it's a holiday but thank you for spending time and joining us for the live. Yeah. It's my pleasure. All right. Good to be here. Okay, so how have you been? How was the lockdown for you? Uh it's it's been pretty decent. I mean, uh, up to coffee time ho gaya. I think you I've kind of like in my head gotten over the whole phase of being stuck because uh, everything is moving every i mean whatever you need to do is happening as uh, with the precaution that you need to take but um, okay uh, i can't hear you oh, yeah okay now i can all right in between your voice audio got cut okay. yeah, yeah so um, <laughs> Overall, it was a decent lockdown. I mean, I don't want to go into the intricate details because I think I've shared it enough number of times. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but ab ab khatam like in my head, I'm like uh, you gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. Okay. What's new is the award that you got a couple of days back. <laughs> Were you expecting it? Well, um, not quite. But I think um, it was a great. Uh, I mean, you know, towards the end of the year. it kind of like added this extra boost uh, of positivity and, and joy but yeah having said that the whole event was uh, very strange in the sense um, in my head obviously you know you have you have certain expectation of an award ceremony but because of the lockdown and because of the covid situation it was uh, a little different but nonetheless i got an award and i'm super excited and happy about it so that's cool Uh, so this this title that you got it's not new for you you won a similar title before yeah uh, you've been uh, i think listed in the times most desirable men in asia and all that so uh, how does it feel like we uh, nominated again and again in this category of uh, looks for that matter <laughs> well i think this would be a first because i think it was um, not just i mean it was nominated amongst the asian um, a uh, male uh, or, or whatever the criteria yeah. was but in the end it was asia sexiest male i think that itself is uh, is a big deal for me i think it's pretty cool uh, to to be nominated firstly uh, on an asia level but um, but yeah i mean it feels good i mean it feels matlab uh, i don't want to brag about it but i think uh, i'm kind of aware of the fact that i, I do look good you know from from a younger age <laughs> okay <laughs> all it's right it's good to be appreciated okay. yeah all right okay okay you've had a pretty uh, twisted journey into the bollywood industry uh, from modeling to clowning to acting yeah. so uh, tell us something about that transition how did you transition from modeling then to clowning and then acting so i mean there was a point i think um, so throughout firstly just just rewind a bit throughout my modeling career i kind of had it behind back of my head that i want to act and also the fact that i was getting opportunities for auditions for films and for uh, you know there weren't too many web series at that point but um, there was television as well but yeah primarily films so in my head somewhere i knew that you know i will do films and i i want to act and i want to get into that space but little did i know that just by going and auditioning and um, thinking that you've done a good audition it's not enough uh, especially in bollywood you know so so uh, i think i kind of prolonged it for way too many years while i continued to model and at one point around i think 2016 or maybe 2017 is when i realized that i need to actually stop my modeling uh, which is basically primarily the fashion shows uh, that take up a lot of time and i mean you travel a lot but yeah it wasn't going in the direction i wanted it to because after a point there's nothing more you can do and that's when i decided to put my energies and channel it towards what i want to do which was acting 
and um, and yeah i mean so yeah circumstances and through some people i knew i ended up getting into um, uh, clowning and uh, before clowning there was uh, there were a few workshops i mean i kept doing but clowning was something i i was really fascinated and um, drawn towards and it kind of gave me um, a good kick start you know because obviously i didn't have much experience but i wanted to learn and i think that was enough for them to have me um, come and watch and be a part of it uh, from the bench because um, uh, seo that theater me you know so um, i was okay with it you know and i spent my i put in a lot of time and energy towards it and i think it gave me uh, this little extra uh, boost and energy to move forward in this uh, uh, you know in this career and yeah i mean after that i think post clowning i joined jeff kohlberg studio and then as soon as i joined that i got twisted my first gig as an actor and um, yeah so the journey started from there okay if given a chance will you go back to clowning yes of course i mean in fact i i think i will make that chance happen because um, okay. uh, that is a great i mean firstly what i did was it wasn't just anything uh, which is commercial it was primarily for kids for for people who are um, you know from uh, not very affluent backgrounds people who are uh, you know going through some diseases or like young juvenile centers or like cancer wards so it was it was performing for people who would actually for that for them that one hour would make a huge difference in their life it would bring some joy and it would um, you know they would be able to just escape like from from their day to day uh, i wouldn't say sadness but day to day reality of things it, it it became an escape for them to have these outsiders come to their place and perform for them and make them laugh you know so i f- i felt so fulfilled there i mean it was it was way more fulfilling than anything else i've ever done yeah, even though my contribution was minimum to start with but then as the universe wanted i ended up doing 12 shows for them there were total 40 shows that we were supposed to perform and whatever things happened and <laughs> i got a chance and i kind of learned the whole routine because i was there from the start you know so i kind of knew it but it's just that i practiced a bit more to be able to perform Uh, when one of the actors uh, had an injury so yeah i would definitely do it all right uh theater is something that is like not very appreciated in our country uh but it it requires a lot of investment of emotions i feel uh in the sense that uh, what do you think is the basic difference between acting mainstream and uh you know performing in a theater uh, yeah I think the main and the most important difference is that for theater you are working non-stop for maybe a month or two months to build uh, the play or build uh, the piece and all the work that you have to put in is before the show day you know on the show day there is no like whatever happens um uh, it uh, you know you come up with something new but for films and for television acting for the camera it's uh, it's different i mean it all depends on what the director really wants at that point um your co-actors i mean of course in theater also co-actors matter but you want to know what happened i just lost the i was just uh, thrown off <laughs> oh no <laughs> no no you were in we are so sorry I, i'm not sure what happened this went off suddenly and i was like okay something uh, i am not sure whether it's my end or your end uh, but yes, actually, you were talking about the difference between clowning and acting let's yeah, go ahead that, with that i'm actually quite jinxed with uh, live sessions I, i always get really bad reception oh, oh gosh okay and I, i'm doing one uh, after a while but but anyway so uh, yeah i mean okay. i was saying so the main difference is that you know your work happens before the show and you bear your heart and soul and you work day in and day out to reach that space where you know you're going to have a live audience come in whereas uh, for films or like for acting for the camera it's it's 
you can really really change things on the day of the shoot because of so many other parameters uh, including your director your co-actors you know the set uh, because a lot of things you haven't seen uh, before you actually go and shoot you know whereas the for theater you know where you're going to perform you have the stage you have the space you have you know your co-actors to rehearse with and you have the entire script so so there you do your work before and then when you're on stage when the thing when the lights go off and the curtains come down you just forget everything and you just let it all go. right yeah okay okay so uh, you're famous i, I think uh, doctor sid kind of changed your entire it took it kick started your career probably i could say uh, but is that name very lucky for you sid so it seems like it is i mean <laughs> Uh, yeah i mean it's really funny because the the uh, the three characters the most prominent characters that i played they all have been siddhant yeah so uh, so and they all have had their nickname uh, sid <laughs> which is quite obvious but uh, but yeah i mean i don't know i don't know what it means um, yeah I, i i would say it's it is lucky i was i, I guess okay all right uh, so did you always want to be an actor or the model or a clown if i may be so bold <laughs> maybe a clown yeah not the first two uh no i mean um, i don't think i really wanted to it wasn't something i had thought of when i was in school for sure even in college uh in fact i was talking to a friend of mine recently from from college we studied in london together i had no such plans or ideas uh, of like uh, you know getting into films or like Uh, acting you know all i want all i knew was that yeah i mean when i was younger i started to dabble with modeling a bit and i knew it paid a lot of money uh, at that point so that's all something that, that is something i considered but not beyond uh, that but things happened as i moved to bombay i mean things changed and um, your career path and your life path also kind of changes as you okay hmm. so if you were asked about one uh, physical feature that you are proud of what is it my eyes okay <laughs> 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 okay <laughs> i am sure everybody agrees <laughs> all right i hope so uh, so i <laughs> have you a new projects lined up like post uh, the lockdown and everything do you have new projects that are lined up well uh, to be honest there is nothing that i have kind of confirm there there's something i finished already but uh, yeah there are talks going on and um, i am extremely uh, patient at this point because um, things are anyway slow and i don't want to rush into anything because um, especially television you know it is it is a very very um, consuming in the industry and um, if, if i need to invest my time uh, into something i really need to be sure about it you know so So yeah I mean there are talks going on but um, I mean I rather rather stick to projects that take up maybe 2 3 months like finite shows um, uh, for for example web series but um, got to be patient <laughs> got to wait okay yeah okay all right uh, so you're also a very avid photographer and traveler uh, so how did you get into that like traveling and photography so traveling i think uh, comes from uh, my dad i think he loves to travel and he's been traveling ever since uh, we were kids me and my sister so i think uh, that the 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 good fortune of us having to have traveled to quite a few places since we were kids um, kind of like i think instigated that and um, yeah i mean i think in school also i mean we were allowed to like i was allowed to go for uh, school trips and like camps and that kind of like uh, build the interest of the outdoors so so yeah i mean i i i think it started there and then once i finish uh, graduation and when i was uh, working there was this time uh, in between where i decided to take a trip to the mountains and at that point i had a sony ericsson uh, phone 
tell, I mean, mm. those times it was a 3.2 megapixel. I remember it was the top of the line at that point for phone cameras, and that's what I had. I mean, I, and I used that for that trip. It was in Smithy Smithy Valley, and when I came back, I had a few, you know, photographer friends through my modeling and all, and they were like superbly impressed. So one of them actually gave me a camera. Said, you know, why don't you just try with the DSLR and see how it goes. And so, yeah, I mean, I did, and there was no looking back. So yeah, thirteen years. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, We're not dragging this for long because it's Christmas and we don't want to take a lot of your time. So we're quickly getting into your rapid fire questions. Right. Uh, you just said you're doing another live, right? Uh, from your account today? No. Uh, okay, fine. All right. Okay, <laughs> well, probably I misheard it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll get into our rapid fire questions, and the idea is to answer within ten seconds or so. Okay. Okay. All right. One thing you always wanted to do but never did. Bungee jump. Sorry, uh, skydive. Bungee jump, I did. Okay. All right. Uh, a show you binge watched. Uh, the uh, Harshad Mehta scam. Okay. Uh, you are the heartthrob of many. Who is your heartthrob? That's a, that's a good question. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's do your smart. first crush. <laughs> ah, first crush. So I, I had like in school, I had um, where I can take her name. I guess uh, nobody would remember. Uh, there is this girl called Natasha. She was about five batches senior to me, and I was ah. like in love with her. Like, I was like, dude, this, <laughs> like she is, like she was perfect. But yeah, five years older. So I mean, I had no scope, but I really, really admired her. I always like uh, tried to find her and like look out for her. <laughs> okay, all right. Hope Natasha is watching this. <laughs> I'm not all taking right. a full name, so <laughs> she's probably married with kids. <laughs> uh, all the potential Natashas in the viewing <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, all the potential. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, a lie you told your parents that you distinctly remember. I I don't really I mean I have a very open relationship. Lies would probably be a white lie. कि मैंने खाना खा लिया. All right. A song you keep humming. Uh, well, whatever comes my way on that particular day. But as of now, I would. I don't. Um, Glory Day. Yeah, I was listening to it a lot, and I heard this new version of it. by podisha i mean podisha is the original one but some martin guy had done a real really 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 soft melodic version and that's a that's a song that i've been listening it's to. interesting because you've started picking up the music also right in the sense that i i heard you play the guitar and sing the other day so yeah uh, well i i i used to play i used to play in a band in school and college so my skills um, were um, i acquired the skills when i was in school उसके बाद प्रैक्टिस कम किया है बट या आई मीन आई कैन स्टिल प्ले आई मीन इट्स लाइक वी हैव मसल मेमोरी ऑफ द गिटार सो या आई मीन आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू गेट बेटर बट इट टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ पेशेंस एंड लॉट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस टू गो फर्दर एंड फर्दर सो या बट आई वाज लकी टू डू इट इन स्कूल ओके आई जस्ट रेड अ फनी कमेंट सेइंग दैट द नताशा विल बी किल्ड सो <laughs> so, did you know that your fans call themselves Namathians? Of course. I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> you can't not know it because it's everywhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, tagged all over. Yeah. Okay. Your idea of a perfect getaway. Perfect weather, perfect sunsets, perfect uh, the person I'm with. who is um, little less i mean not less but like who is completely compatible and um, great food i mean like great in the sense i can actually visualize it right now some good wine um, great music and the outdoors okay a weird habit that you have weird habit 
मुझे लगा बियर्ड हैबिट है is a bad habit that comes to my mind but it's not a weird habit uh, let me think of a weird habit maybe kuch to hai mere ko i have a feeling i have some weird habit for sure i'm just trying to think i don't know if it's weird or not but like i don't i don't eat any seed Okay. <laughs> some people, some right. people, like for example, watermelon. No, no, watermelon and like some. Is it because like, your parents told you in your childhood that a tree will grow from your stomach? I'm just used to taking out <laughs> the seeds like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is something you want to tell your younger self? I mean, not that you're old, but you know, younger, younger yeah. <laughs> teenage self, well, probably. Uh, yeah. i would say uh, that the patience patience is the key to everything and uh, just uh, hang in there and have trust in yourself and uh, trust in everything around you and everything will happen like like a symphony it all it all eventually falls into place uh, when the time is right so when your when me as a musician is going to come into the song it will i can only mm-hmm. come in when i'm supposed to come in not before or after it because if i do it before or after i will spoil the song so i just made okay. that up by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so, okay so, yeah. what is the dream collaboration that you have dream collaboration uh, would be endorsed by all the um, all the resorts in the world and all the camera equipment uh, companies okay All right. Who is that the one person? Oh, sorry. Okay. Who is that one person you want at your doorstep singing jingle bells? Uh, one person who I want my doorstep singing Santa Claus. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, come on. When you have, right. you ask me a question. I say yeah. Okay. Jingle bell. So Santa Claus will sing. No. Or who will sing? Anybody that some, you know, I can't have a, I can't have a classical Indian classical singer coming and singing Santa. Uh. Okay, <laughs> all right. We'll take Santa Claus for an answer. Okay. okay. Uh, what is your midnight indulgence or comfort food? Oh, the list goes on and on. <laughs> well, I like I like a lot. Of, I like to eat a lot of crisp or chips, uh, depending on where you are. But yeah, I mean, I know it's crazy uh, unhealthy. Uh, I eat so now. I I mean, I I've replaced it with nuts. I eat all kind of nuts. Uh, I have this big jar which I keep refilling, but that's my go-to snack as of now. Uh, I can. I, I started to also. Um, I mean, I used to have a lot of chocolate as well in the fridge, which I used to stock up and then finish it in, in the night. But but now I don't stock up, so I'm good. I mean, but yeah, I would okay. eat it if I had. Yeah. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, who is your favorite fictional character? Uh, well, I would say uh, I was a Superman fan when I was a kid. Now, I mean, I would watch, but me, it's not. I'm not like crazy passionate. Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know. But yeah, I would say Superman. I would love to be Superman. Okay, okay one person you want to be stuck in an island with? Uh, my to be wife, whoever she uh, is, wherever she is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. You heard it first, dear viewers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, what is your dream car? Uh, Range Rover. If you were granted three wishes, what would they be? I don't know. I, if this question, you know, I, the first thing that always comes to my mind.
mind is to ask for more wishes because then I can just be easy about it. But I check, check, check. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, okay, but yeah, I can go on. <laughs> okay, so um, I would say the first would be uh, good health. Second would be uh, to have a good, uh, you know, a life partner. <laughs> I mean, you've been okay. emphasizing on that a lot throughout this life. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're no, I mean, I'm just being honest. I'm just giving you yeah, yeah. what comes. Yeah, and we appreciate that. Yes. There's no special <laughs> agenda that I want to. People know I'm single. People know uh, that. But anyway, so yeah, that health and then um, good compatibility, being in a relationship or whatever it is, um, uh, you know, and then um, career. I mean, it, it all, then everything else like falls into place, you know, if you're sorted like that. And um, um, yeah, I mean, whatever I ask for myself, I would want everybody around me to have as well, because then only you will be able to enjoy it. I mean, I can't. Okay. In isolation. All right. The last question: What is your New Year resolution? Um, I'm actually pretty good since last year with my last year's New Year resolution. So this year, I think I haven't really thought about it much, but I know that I'm heading um, in that direction. I guess it's um, it's because of the year how it's been. I just feel that. I want to like cleanse, declutter, and um, you know, be be as detached to the non-essential uh, materialistic things as I can be. Uh, I mean, I can't really throw everything I have, but uh, but yeah, I want to let go of a lot because um, yeah, it just it just feels good. To like let go of things okay. that you're not using. All right. Okay. Thank you, Namal, for taking time out and spending time with us uh, on Christmas. And we wish you all the best. Merry Christmas and um, a happy New Year in advance. And all the best for your minimalistic life. Uh, we <laughs> hope that that resolution uh, falls so into much. place. Yeah. Thank All you right, for having thank me. You. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Merry Christmas and um, a very, very happy New Year to each one of you um, and everybody else. All right. Okay. Bye, Namath. Thank you again. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See you.